In the past few years, commercial spaceflight has gone from a far-off dream to something within reach, at least for the super wealthy. Like when Jeff Bezos invited Star Trek's William Shatner to blast into space aboard the Blue Origin New Shepard spacecraft, and it's only scratching the surface. The space industry saw record-breaking growth in 2020, as investors poured almost $9 billion into private companies during the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of these companies provide parts and services to government agencies like NASA, but others have bigger plans for 2022 in the years ahead, venturing into space with their own crew and rockets. Virgin Galactic, headed by billionaire Richard Branson, plans to launch the first mass commercial spaceflight in 2022. Tech mogul Elon Musk is also hard at work on Starship, an interplanetary rocket that might be the first spacecraft to take humans to Mars. And Jeff Bezos has also thrown his hat into the space industry ring, literally. There has been interest in the last decade or or two of trying to find more commercial applications for space and, and the space station. But what's really new, I think, in in the last five years or so is this rise of completely private enterprises to um, provide trips to orbit or close to orbit, uh, which would be done for other than research or scientific purposes necessarily. The commercialization of space isn't just sending the elite on extraterrestrial adventures. It's transitioning the space industry from the government to the private sector, investing in reusable rockets, in new equipment, and experimentation in space. So historically, space in general has been kind of a government playground. Uh, There's a lot of reasons for this. One of them is cost. As we've seen kind of space commercialized, uh, that has absolutely changed. We've seen public agencies like NASA uh, start to utilize commercial technologies and leverage those to get to space. One thing you might see, right, is that the commercial crew program, uh, we now have uh, private companies taking uh, astronauts uh, to the International Space Station. Governments monopolized space exploration in its early days because of the colossal financial investment and high risk involved. At the time, space travel was reserved exclusively for trained astronauts and unmanned spacecraft. So you had the the U.S. and the Soviet Union at the time engaged in a space race, essentially one upsmanship throughout the 60s. Uh, That period more or less came to an end with the lunar landings. Then you had the era of uh, transition from Apollo to the space shuttle era, and it was focused on primarily supporting research activities, then the building of the International Space Station. And and that has been the bulk of human activity in space, very much research focused, very much government focused. However, space travel still requires immense funding for research and development, innovation and supplies. NASA's budget is also subject to budgetary cuts at the government's discretion. Over time, companies in the private sector, mostly commercial billionaires with deep pockets, were willing to subsidize future travels to space. The public sector sometimes has funding constraints, right? They need to make sure that their their types of space exploration is funded. And sometimes even with the best planning, those, those don't pan out. But if you are a private company, what you need is kind of the ability and the investment on the private side to kind of drive those innovations. So I'm not constrained in any way by a, a federal budget. I, am, I can say this is my priority as a company, so I'm going to pursue this space innovation, this exploration mission, because this is, this is what I choose to do for my business. As NASA pursues riskier and increasingly difficult deep space missions, like the Artemis Lunar Program and the Perseverance Rover and Ingenuity Helicopters mission on Mars, it turned more established functions like low Earth orbit, or the International Space Station orbits, over to private enterprise. In 2019, NASA unveiled a new low Earth orbit commercialization strategy to increase private sector use of the International Space Station. The initiative changes its policy to make a docking port available for commercial modules. So we've seen a ton of interest in space across the board, uh, not just from private industries. I think that part of the reason why they're excited is because space is just an inherently exciting place, right? It's the final frontier. No one is accelerating the private industry's involvement in spaceflight more than Elon Musk and his aerospace company, SpaceX. SpaceX's Falcon 1 rocket became the first privately funded liquid propellant rocket to reach orbit in 2008. After the mission's success, privately funded space travel became a viable option. 
More developments from SpaceX quickly followed, including Falcon 9 Dragon 2010, the first private spacecraft to successfully launch, orbit, and recover. And in 2017, SpaceX demonstrated Falcon 9 as the first reusable orbital rocket. Starship, arguably SpaceX's most ambitious development, is a privately funded, fully reusable, super heavy lift launch system capable of interplanetary spaceflight. In 2021, NASA selected SpaceX to assist in developing equipment for its Artemis program, which aims to send astronauts back to the moon, including the first woman later this decade. Elon Musk also hopes Starship will take the first people to Mars to explore the red planet as a potential next home for humans. Starship is awaiting environmental clearance and a launch license from the Federal Aviation Administration for the mega rocket's first orbital test flight. Blue Origin, founded by former Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos, is one of several companies that provide services to NASA's Flight Opportunities Program through suborbital vehicles, high-altitude balloons, and parabolic aircraft flights. These space flights demonstrate technologies at high altitudes or in reduced gravity, and would not be possible otherwise, short of going into orbit. The company has been flight testing its suborbital rocket New Shepard since 2012. Like SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, New Shepard is a reusable rocket system designed to take astronauts and research payloads past the Kármán line, the internationally recognized boundary of space. New Shepard has made three successfully crewed flights to low Earth orbit, with civilian passengers on board including Jeff Bezos, William Shatner, Michael Strahan, and Wally Funk a member of the Mercury 13 group of women who underwent the same testing as NASA astronauts, but never went into space. Blue Origin is planning more crewed space flights in 2022, but no announcements have been made. Virgin Galactic hails itself as the first commercial space line, with the sole purpose of civilian space travel. In 2021, the company unveiled its newest spaceship, the VSS Imagine, designed to take civilian passengers and scientific experiments to and from suborbital space. And in July, Richard Branson, along with three other non-astronauts, rode aboard the VMS EVE on Virgin Galactic's first and only crewed spaceflight. In 2022, Virgin Galactic opened space reservations to the general public, with tickets costing $450,000 each, a hefty price tag. I don't think there's a single answer to what the fee covers. You can look at it in a few different ways. If you're going to actually go to orbit and spend time in orbit, there's likely going to be significant additional training, even for people who are purely civilians, if you will, just going there as tourists. If you're going to actually be an orbital tourist, there's probably going to be a considerable amount of training that has to go into that, even for a casual flyer. Um, in the past, these missions have, have usually taken a year or more of training. Virgin Galactic space flights won't circle Earth like the astronauts aboard the International Space Station, but passengers will get to experience a few minutes of weightlessness and see the curve of Earth against the blackness of space. So what's the impact of all this increased space activity? I think it is the economic activity we're seeing in space is trying to kind of meet a demand for things that are, are generated on Earth. The demand is generated on Earth for everything that happens in space. Uh, so I would expect that you know we'll continue to see this kind of investment um, and the future impacts on the economy, who's to say, but as there's more money going into these these different types of space companies, we should definitely keep our eyes on it. In 2021, NASA announced that it was offering $45 million to about 350 small businesses and research institutions to develop new innovative technologies, such as a 3D printing system to make tools in space during the Artemis Lunar Program. Other commercial companies have won contracts to carry NASA payloads to the moon. In addition to the pure thrill of space tourism, what you see right now is a lot of investment that's also driven by the practical needs here on Earth. And with the vantage point of space, the altitude, the global coverage and all, it does provide a lot of advantages. Uh, it's not a panacea. It's not the only solution to any of these things. But for all of those reasons and the combination of the resources and uh, the requirements or needs, I think you will see continued innovation and it's going to be a very exciting time in space.